and welcome. Today, the inauguration look with just a twist. So let's do the pattern work here. Um, this is, I'm using the pattern. There's a few changes, not a lot of changes, and it's not hard, and I think it's fun, especially if you like patterns. If you don't like patterns, it's gonna be a little more challenging for you, but I love patterns, so that's why I wanna take you through. Because I think the more we learn that one pattern can be so many different things, it's just tweaked a little bit or changed here or changed there, I think we'll just enjoy it so much. So you're not gonna be able to see my picture of Melania Trump, but what I want you to maybe print one out so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, I started with, this is Lafayette's jacket, it's 1953 is the pattern number, I made a copy of it. What I've done so far is I've added four inches to the width here and four inches just in this front portion here. All right, so four inches here, the collar is four because you can see it's a really wide collar and then four inches down the front. Now, I will say, after looking at this, and again, you'll have to look at your own picture. You probably can't see from where I'm pointing. So there's a couple things about this jacket that I didn't like. The look overall was obviously fabulous. The color, the contrast that she was to this whole array of men in suits. There's not a lot of women, so everyone would have on dark suits. That was a given to come up with the light blue and make her contrast to the entire party was, you know, not even brilliant, but just a great idea. Um, so the light blue carries it off. I'm not going to repeat it in the light blue because I don't want a light blue. It's not what I want in my living, but you can change it up. What's beautiful about it is, is it was the color for her, clearly, and the color for the occasion. And then, of course, the collar is it just framed her face beautifully. So if you notice the jacket, this is a raglan sleeve. And I don't understand why that choice was made because Raglan always has problems. It always has wrinkles. And sure enough, it has wrinkles. It had wrinkles throughout the whole entire thing. Um, so I'm going to change that to a set-in sleeve because I think it will give it a cleaner look. So that's why, again, Jacket 1953 Lafayette's jacket will work perfect as a base. I'm going to leave the sleeve and the body just like it is. I'm only going to deal with the front piece. With that front center front is all I'm going to change. Um, I don't want to wear mine with a sheath dress. I want to wear mine with nothing underneath and with pants, with slacks. So this cross, I'm going to lower where it crosses. But again, I'll show you how to do the cross and then you can decide where you want it to be. And so you can make it wherever. And if you notice, it ends at her waist. So if this is a more waisted, it's almost like a little wrap than it is a jacket, but it, it has the workings of a jacket. All right, so those are the changes we're going to make. We're going to lengthen this. The cross point is going to be a little lower, still a soft. This is what we call a shawl collar, but it's a shawl collar that is, um, there's three types of collars. One is a, a full roll, one is a flat, and one is a partial roll. If you think of a full roll like a shirt collar, it comes up and covers itself at center back. If you think of a flat collar as a Peter Pan collar, it's literally flat all the way around. And the outside edge is um, completely the same as the garment so that it lays flat. You can trace the garment. A partial roll, which is what this is, you can see that it's down onto the garment um, and it's longer at the outside edge than it is at the neck edge. Because I don't have the garment, I can't measure that outside edge. If I had the garment, I could, and that would give me the answers. I could measure the neck edge, the outside edge, and I would know exactly what's happened. Because I don't have that, I'm going to make a mock. I'm going to make a mock up because there's just some variables in there that I cannot tell. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to guess. Um, I'm going to make up the mock and then we'll tweak the pattern and then we'll make up the real thing. My choice today is a red leather because I love leather because it will give me the median, the body that I wanted to have and because I'll be able to wear it like long, 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 long time. So red leather is my choice. Um, the things you want to keep in mind fabric wise is you want something about the weight of a Pontaroma knit. I think most of us are familiar with a Pontaroma knit. So if I say that, you'll understand kind of the body that we'll want. It's about the body that you want. You could go heavier, but if you go lighter, you just won't get the body of the collar. Many of you say to me, well, can I reinforce it? You can. Yes, you can. You can put some interfacing in there and give it some additional body if you want to. Um, and again, those are all variables, but if you just aim for a Pontaroma knit, 
I think you'll find that's what you need. Okay, so this is just the front of the jacket. This is Lafayette's pattern number 1953. Even if you don't have it, don't want it, you can still look at it and understand the base that I'm doing. Widened it four inches here, widened it here. Clearly it goes up higher. However, at the front, which is right where it secures to uh, the seam here, it is tapered to nothing. So while I'm adding, while I added the four inches all the way, here I'm going to actually taper to nothing. And I, I'm actually gonna just curve that just slightly. You could use your French curve, but I'm just gonna curve that slightly because as this folds around like there, you see there's a soft curve there. It's not a harsh uh, change. The other curve that I'm gonna curve just slightly is here at the bottom. So I'm gonna use my French curve and just take that off just slightly. And again, I wanna do this all in the muslin. I wanna get, whenever I make a muslin, or a mock, whatever you want to call it. I want to get as close as I actually possibly can to being correct. And you can see that even gives it a different feel, just with this portion being curved and that portion being curved, kind of gives it a different feel. Okay, so again, I want to be as close as I possibly can to the right answer. Um, I don't want to just kind of throw it together and then have to do a third mock. I only want to do one. So that's why I say go through, make your best guesses, and go from there. When the collar folds over, if, if I were making it, this is center back, and this is actually the collar portion. So this is, if I'm making a partial roll collar, this is actually the portion that needs to become longer. So this is where I'm going to cut, and I'm going to add... Um, I'm going to add three inches. I'm going to add an inch at each of those cuts. Again, if I had the actual garment, and why I always tell you guys, you know, get the garment, get the garment, get the garment, because I could just measure this edge. You can see this edge doesn't change. That's the actual neck edge. It's over here that's changing. So I'm going to just add pieces in there. Make each of those roughly an inch and then we're gonna go make the muslin. And I'm gonna use for my muslin um, denim. Denim is similar to a leather weight. Um, and so that's, a, that's an easy thing for me to use. And denim's fairly inexpensive especially in contrast to leather. So, you know, I guess it's all relative, right? If we were in ready to wear, and over the years as I worked for many rep, um, manufacturers, they made the mock-up in leather. You know, they would not, because they were making so many garments and it had to be correct, it had to be just right. They didn't mess around with uh, using a, a secondary fabric. They actually used the real thing. All right, so one inch, one inch, one inch and the goal is simply that it won't become a turtleneck if you don't lengthen the outside edge if you don't make it some kind of rolled it rolled collar partial roll is what it's called I'm sorry if you don't make it some kind of partial roll collar it'll end up like a turtleneck it'll just grab your neck and and not be what you want all right so it may need more than three inches it's an educated guess on my part and then we'll go do a muslin now, what I did do is, oops, that slip. Let me just make sure that that's. Going to be the one inch we need. Okay, so after you've secured this down, this is all not necessary. This is not, all I did was back the paper because I was making enough changes, I went ahead and did make a copy of, of the front of the pattern. A lot of times, you know, you can just wing it, but when you start covering and, and doing all this stuff, I think it's important to make a copy. Otherwise, you just it's too confusing. So here is my inch, here is my inch, and here's my inch. And it doesn't matter where they are, but what you can see is this is getting longer. So again, this is center back. 
it will sew to the back of the jacket. But as this folds over, you, you can see that what's going to allow it to do is go down onto the body of the jacket further, and so it won't end up just kind of like looking like it's choking her. It was beautifully done. The pattern work is just gorgeous. I didn't like the sleeve, but other than that, we're not going to worry about it. We're going to leave the rest of the jacket just like it is. I already have a two-piece sleeve. I don't need to make a mock of that. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and cut this out of denim, and then we'll come back to where I've made the mock-up, and I'll show you the mock-up. Now, the other thing that I would say to you is when you are doing something like this, make sure that the jacket, the body of the jacket fits like you want it to in the first place. You don't want to deal with changing the pattern and dealing with fit both one time. Notice, I already know that this jacket's right. This is the same pattern I did with the Sherpa vest. So I already know everything fits. I already know everything's right. I'm only dealing with the style. Sometimes when we are dealing with fit and style at the same time, the confusion arises and we don't separate that out. So I would recommend that if you're dealing with this pattern for the first time, deal with the fit first, know that you like it, know everything's fine, and then come in and do the changes. Otherwise, it's hard to separate out what's a fit problem and what's a change problem when you're new to the whole experience. Okay, so let's go do this, and then I'll come back and I'll show you the muslin that has been done. Okay, so here we are with the mock-up, and I'm just thrilled. I'm just pleased. I, I feel like we're just right in the right direction. I made two changes, so let me show you what those are. When I, on the original pattern, added four inches this way, that was a no-no. That is the neck edge. That's what sews to center back. So that was not changing. So that was a mistake I made. And so what I did is I laid this down. I took off my four inches and I cut it, I cut it off. So be sure and take that back off your pattern. You don't need it. Now, because I wanted to still have it come down a little bit, when I was slashing from this side to this side, I went ahead and slashed again and added another inch just so that it came down away from my neckline just a little bit. So know that. Um, the other change I made on this one, obviously not on the pattern, is I went all the way around and I cut off my seam allowance. Because when I first put it on, if it had that extra seam allowance, it was bunching. When it wasn't too wide, it was actually just exactly what I wanted, but that extra seam allowance all the way around is hard to visualize. And I actually cut off the hem at the same time. So that the jacket, not the width, because that still has a seam allowance on, but it's exactly as it's gonna present itself. I'm gonna use a one inch shoulder pad because it needs um, to not look like it's all neck. The, the body needs to balance the neck. So I would, you don't have to use a one inch, but I would recommend you just take a look at that and see if you don't want to go to a wider seam allowance. All right, so in the pattern making, the four inches here was too much, still add the additional. That was right, that's what makes it come down here. Then in doing the jacket, remember I had said earlier that I didn't know what held it in place? Most likely it's actually, when I looked back at the photo, it's probably hidden underneath here because it's really easy to hide this underneath. So this underneath here is attached to the seam. And then you can see that this can, I don't have a mirror, but you can see that this can roll up. You know, you can kind of have this go down or as high up as you want it to. So you have a lot of variables though that this can pin underneath here or button or do whatever else. And you can see that will roll down and be perfect just like that. So here's the thing that I really wanted you to understand more than anything is there's variables and I wanted you to understand where to add and what not to add so you could really create it for yourself. When I added the width of the four inches, you know, maybe you don't want to add that much because maybe your neck is shorter. When you look at the photograph of her, if you notice her hair was even, and I don't have, I don't have a close up here, but her hair was even swooped in the exact shape of the collar and the neckline. It was just so pretty. It was so well done. Um, and, and partly I think it's important to, if you have long hair, you have to wear it up because you have to be able to see the jawline and the collar and how they coordinate together. You don't want to do dangling earrings because the earrings would interfere with the collar. So when you look at a long, a farther away picture of her, it's a large earring, but it's a post. 
all those details kind of go in together to make it a really a beautiful presentation is really what it was. It's a beautiful presentation. So after you consider the, the jacket and all the details here, which we've covered, watch the hair, watch the earrings, just watch those little details on presentation. But also what I think is fabulous is we're, you can take this on anything. You could put it on a sweater. You could put it on anything that if you like the collar, and make it work for you and I think that's the beauty of sewing. The base is pattern 1953 but what you can do with that and the width and how you can make it adaptable to you there's so many variations that I think that's what I love about pattern making is I can bring it in to make it about me. I want to go over just a minute because I'm gonna go ahead and now and cut my leather and I'm gonna make up the leather jacket and then I'll show you the leather jacket once it's made. Y'all have watched me cut and sew leather we're not gonna show that this is gonna be way too long but um, I want to help you figure out the the skins that you need. So I'm going to go to the back, and I've kind of written my little formula here. It's 60 inches wide, and it calls for two yards. So 60 inches wide is 60 inches, two yards is 72 inches. Convert everything to inches. So 60 times 72 gives me 4,320 inches. I just multiplied those two numbers. Leather is in a, is in square feet, and on every leather piece. There's a little number on the inside, my shoulder pad fell out, that marked um, seven, seven square feet is what this leather piece is. So seven a square foot is 144 inches. A square foot 12 by 12 is 144 inches. So you take that 4,320 and just divide by the 144. So take the width of the fabric in inches, the length of the fabric in inches, that will divide that by the 144, and that gives me 30 square feet. So I decided average skin was going to be six square feet, roughly, even though I had a little extra, and I decided five skins would work for me. So I've chosen my five skins um, that will do everything the pattern tells me that I need. So I'm off to get my leather and I'm off to start making the jacket. So we'll show you next when the jacket's finished. I'm just really excited about my new Trump jacket. Um, and like I said, just watch this one thing where we widened it here. Be cautious of that. All right, so next time we see you, we'll have the jacket all finished for you, and you can see the effect and all the little finishes we did. So here we are, my jacket's done. I love my jacket, it's everything I wanted. I can wear it with my jeans, I can just make it more casual. Since I'm not gonna be ever be the first lady, and since I'm never gonna be at the inauguration, I can kind of take those principles of why they were good, and I can apply them to my way of living and my lifestyle. But I want to go back to the muslin for just a second. I want to show you that, remember I had the jacket. And here's the jacket. And so what I wanted to show you, and that's exactly as I made it, uh, obviously adding the sleeves. But what I wanted to show you now is how to make it into that, um, the shorter jacket that Melania wore, just in case you want to. So what I did is I cut off the first layer and, and take it away slowly because you don't have the actual jacket. You can't measure how long these pieces are and connect the dots. You actually have to kind of trial and error and speculate, you know, how the cut is, the angle of the cut and all that. But I, I did that. I decided that was the good cut that, that would be the shorter jacket. And so now what I'm going to do is continue this to center back because it was just a shorter jacket and just go right there to the center back seam. And once you do that, I'm gonna take it off. And, and remember again, I said it earlier, when you go to try on the jacket, be sure you put those shoulder pads in. Those shoulder pads are really important for the fit. Remember that we don't wanna focus on too many things at one time. So now what I can do is lay this down Don't freehand both sides. You could freehand one side, use your French curve, kind of clean it up. But then once I get to the other side, I want to duplicate what I cut from the other side. So just lay it down, get those seams to match so that everything lays nice and flat. You could use the part that I cut off, but I cut it off in two sections. So I think I'd rather just use what's remaining as a accurate way to do this. So I'm going to cut, cut, cut. I'm following the other side. And there I have it. And again, when I'm doing the muslin, 
don't use, um, don't add seam allowances on the edges that are raw because it helps you get a little bit of a better visual without that seam allowance. I'm going to put back in my shoulder pads. You don't have to have shoulder pads in yours and you can take it and put it on a base that's not a set in sleeve. Remember, we decided, I decided to make all those changes because I liked the fit better. Okay, so now her jacket, let me see just which way it wraps. This goes under, and this goes this way. And you can fix all that up again. And so now what you can see is really pretty much exactly the jacket that she had on and the difference of how it looks with it cut away on both sides. There we have it. All right. So hopefully you can, again, understand. And just one thing also, when you go to close this up, you've got great access underneath here. So I looked on her outfit and there's no closure that shows. And so you can really hide the closure underneath that collar. You can put a little buttonhole here and then a button on the base so that it fastens very easily. And you don't really have to worry about what type of closure. You could use a snap, you could use lots of different things. So again, it's just fun to be able to see a look that you like, to be able to really take it to your lifestyle, what works for you, and, and really make it work. It's just been a lot of fun. So front silhouette patterns, happy sewing.